Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome everybody to the Forsaken Easter Egg Guide. This is a super easy and straightforward guide containing only the necessary information you need to actually beat the Easter Egg. It is super fun. It is a super short egg, and the boss fight is absolutely incredible. I think you guys are going to enjoy this one a whole lot. As per the usual, I will include at the very, very top of the description and also in a pinned comment if anything changes at all, whether Trek be patching things or anything gets changed up in the Easter Egg. Any additional information will be down there, so if you're having any trouble, check that, or you can just check it before the video starts. But hope you enjoy while you're down there go ahead and hit that like button and let's get into the very first step so the very first step you want to do is you want to get into pack punch and go ahead and end the lockdown now once you have pack punch unlocked the entire map is open you need to build the crystal axe this is the very first step of the easter egg it is pointless to go farther in this easter egg until you do this so a couple different ways to get it is number one getting it out of the box if you want to get very lucky number two is you can do trials and hope you get lucky and get that get it as a reward from trials or number three is to go ahead and build it using the confirmed every single time 100 percent method if you don't know how to build the crystal axe, just make sure you go down in the description, watch the video that I uploaded on how to do that. It's very easy to do, and I definitely recommend just getting it out of the way as soon as possible. So once you have the crystal axe out of the way, you want to go ahead and go back to the pack a bunch area, and you're going to find this big red glowing button on the wall. You're going to press it, and it's going to play a cutscene where Maxis and the Forsaken start fighting. You can watch this all the way through, or you can just go ahead and click on your mouse or hold the trigger, and it will actually skip the cutscene. You can do either or, but once this is over, you are on to the next step. So immediately after you watch this cutscene, you're going to head down to the fuel processing area and you're going to go ahead and press these little boxes. Now you do need to press the number of boxes for the number of players in your game. You all need to sync it up and go three, two, one, all press at the exact same time. But if you're just playing in solo, you only have to press one, two, two for two people, etc. And you're going to go into a long lock town. So make sure you're a little bit set up. Make sure you maybe pack a bunch of your crystal axe before you do this. But once you complete it, this little fuel tank will drop down from the ceiling, pick that up and you're on to the next step. So once you've completed the lockdown, there's going to be a small delay, aka you have to go to the next round, and at the beginning of the next round, the characters will talk again, but then you'll hear the PA system go off and say something is crashing into the arena from another dimension. So once this happens, there are going to be three giant crystals that spawn around the map that all are going to spawn zombies infinitely until you destroy them with the crystal axe. So basically, you're going to go to the alternate fire mode by doing up on the D-pad or B on your keyboard. You're going to shoot the three little balls going around, and you're going to go ahead and slice them in half, and they are going to just disappear and have a tiny little crystal that you can pick up in each one of them now with this rock you need to wait for the abomination to basically finish whatever attack he's doing and slowly be walking toward you when he is doing this you're going to throw it at him and he is going to actually catch it in his mouth eat it his tail is going to turn red and then you need to kill him and pick up the crystal that he drops so the first location was obviously the storage zone five rooftops. I just showed that. The next one is in the bunker. So you want to break this crystal as per the usual. But when the abomination spawns in this area, don't kill it right away. You're going to actually use this for something else. So you're going to bring this guy all the way over to the office, which is again in the bunker area. And you're going to need him to charge you and run his head into this back right corner of the room. As you can see, he will run his head into that corner and will actually drop that little pedestal right there that you're going to be able to pick up. This is another part needed for the Easter egg. It's really easy to do. You can do it with any abomination but I just recommend using the one that spawns in here anyway once that's done go ahead feed him up and then just absolutely murder him and pick up the part that he drops and now you have two out of the three done these can be done in any order but this is usually the one that I go for the last crystal is going to be over in the spawn area. This one has a crazy little, you know, path that these crystals are flying. So you kind of have to set up and wait for it to come around and shoot it. It'll follow the same path. It took me a few tries for it to come around and get it. But you're going to kill it as per the usual. As soon as all three of those little orbs are killed, you're going to smash the crystal, pick it up. And again, these abominations usually spawn right when you break this. So again, it's much easier and much better if you just do this on as early around as possible. So feed him up. He's going to go ahead and munch on that take out your axe, kill him again, and pick up the third and final crystal. And once you're done done with this, you're basically on to some of the last steps. So you're going to want to be starting to get your perks, start getting boss fight ready because we are going in very soon. So the last thing you need to do is you need to get dead wire on your gun. You're going to head over to the arcade and there's going to be a Grand Prix machine right here. You're going to actually kill a zombie with dead wire who will link to this Grand Prix machine and actually activate this special RC car that you can buy for 2000 points. Now you're going to drive this RC car as quickly as possible and it will blow up if it touches any zombies whatsoever so just a heads up make sure that the area is clear do it right at the end of the round and you're going to drive it into this tv station this automatic just explosion that's happening will blast off this thing and you're going to jump to the back wall and blow it up in mid-air and if done correctly you'll be able to come over here and there will be a big tv monitor sitting on the wall pick that up and we are now ready for boss fight 
All right, so this is it. This is boss fight. You're going to head over to this workbench on Main Street, and you're going to build this Ethereum neutralizer. Now, it's going to take about a minute to actually fill up. You're going to hear a bunch of quotes. It'll be charging up. And then, essentially, you'll get one final confirmation if you're ready to go into the boss fight. So, what I recommend doing is just absolutely getting as set up as possible. I think a lot of different things will work in this, except for close-range weapons. Uh, the axe work, if you want to upgrade that. I, myself, just went with an M16 because it's more reliable in terms of ammo and sometimes the axe has problems spawning ammo and stuff like that so you can pretty much go in with whatever you want as long as it is long range everything is going to work and you're probably going to want at least a single pack of punched axe just to help you out because the axe is just literally that overpowered so basically the way this works is, is you're going to have a little escort bot that is going to slowly run out of, out of fuel as you're driving and there will be these little red ethereum crystals on either side of the road sometimes up high that you have to climb up to that you're going to grab you're going to shoot the crystals grab and it will come back and just you just have to climb up and keep feeding this so that it keeps on moving it will eventually stop moving try to get, just get as many as possible even if you think that it's fine if it has enough fuel and eventually when it gets to the very very end you will get a nice little safe zone which will have a pack a punch a perk machine and also a buildable table for you to just get as boss fight ready as possible if you manage to get some extra points or whatever you need to get and as soon as you're ready to go in it is time to hit that button and go into the final boss fight now onto the boss fight honestly if you listen to a few simple tips this boss fight will just be absolutely the easiest thing ever but basically the flow of the boss fight is the very first thing you need to do is you need to break each of his shoulders again the crystal axe will be really really good with this with this fire mode it'll also be good if you have like an M 16 or something like that break both shoulders and essentially maxis will now be asking for a charge she'll be asking to be filled up essentially so that she can put her energy into a cannon which you're going to fire so fill her up put the energy in the cannon fire the cannon and if you fail the cannon aka you're shooting the wrong spot or you take too long etc you'll just have to fill up maxis again and redo the entire cannon so just make sure you get on there and do the right thing the zombies will actually avoid you when you're on there so you're going to do this twice you're going to just as soon as Maxis is ready and filled up again, she'll go to the other cannon, and then you're going to do it again. And as soon as you get to the halfway point on his health, you'll see a little mini cutscene. It'll tell you that, like, Maxis is going to be bad. She's going to be a terrible person and kill all the people, etc. Uh, so as soon as you get kicked out, kicked out of here, the game changes a little bit. He starts getting more attacks other than just slamming the ground with his fist, which honestly just don't stand under it, and you'll be fine. It's really easy to avoid. Don't get too super close to him, and it's fine. So now he will have a couple more attacks, which are energy balls, which ex explode, and it will also be able to freeze you. So basically, the tip is don't rush. Just stay away from him. If you see them coming toward your way or you see a bunch of zombies, train up the zombies as much as possible and actually just don't worry about killing them there's no reason to kill them unless you're actually filling up maxis so train the zombies don't kill them keep your distance and just shoot when you can eventually you're going to whittle your way down on the armor there's no like regening on the armor or anything you don't have a specific amount of time so break the armor again and then you're going to get on the cannon again shoot him again and then his armor will come back one last time on his head break that armor same thing as usual there'll just be a few more zombies a few more specialties some panzers will spawn so i just recommend focusing the bosses whenever they spawn once the, all the bosses are dead just focus on training up while you're breaking the armor that's literally all there is to the fight focus bosses do not fight inside of a freeze ring because you will get frozen and killed and it is super super easy so once that is done you will get a little mini event will happen and it basically you just start taking damage for no reason i don't think anyone has figured out a way to actually survive this but should be fine as long as you just don't die out completely um try to stay alive stay away from the zombies maybe use like a healing aura if you have it etc if you're running with the squad either way it's it's incredibly easy i literally died and then it revived me immediately for the cutscene so really easy and you will get the cutscene final main quest completed and you are good to go this is the entire main quest if you guys did enjoy this tutorial make sure you leave a like make sure you subscribe for more videos i'm going to be doing some world record speedrun attempts later on this week it's going to be an absolute blast so hopefully y'all stay tuned for that We'll see you in the next one. Peace out, everybody. Bye-bye.